Okay, so the next thing we're going to pick up is we're going to pick up some more rupees, we're going to pick up some arrows, and uh, we're also going to do something with that letter that we got um, from that one guy who was like, give this to the old lady. But first we're going to go back to where we got the shield because that's the closest to our first rupee gain. Gonna need to get the candle back out because we are back in the overworld. Also, my god, this controller is not doing me justice. I'm playing this on Virtual Console, because again, that's the only way I have to play this game. And uh, I'm using my GameCube controller, and for some reason, this particular GameCube controller, the uh, wire is like getting in the middle of the controller, so it's like trying to bat it away every now and then. Which is really, really annoying. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead and go this way again. If you remember, if we go north from here, that's where we actually found the fairy fountain. That is not where we're going to go, though. We're going to go to this little quaint shop up here. And we're going to get some arrows. Why? Because why not? Because we need arrows. Maybe not right now, but definitely later on. Uh, one thing to say about arrows is there there are no arrow pickups in this game. Uh, basically, whenever you shoot an arrow, you actually use some of your rupees. So the rupees are not only your currency, but they're also your arrows as well. I don't know why they did it that way, since there are bombs. so And they have other counters up there. And it even looks like there would be a good counter for arrows, but... Uh, I, don't, I don't know, they just didn't do that for some reason. I always found that kind of odd. But hey, I'm not the game developer. Maybe there was uh, maybe there was some magical reason for why they did that. Maybe the people who developed this game were like under a dare. And it's like, we dare you to use currency for your arrows or something. I don't know, trying to think outside of the box. Oh, damn it, there's a blue rupee there. Uh, that's okay, though. Um, are we in the next room where I need to blow stuff up yet? I don't think so. No, I think it's the next room we want to be in. Maybe not. Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Uh, it's a bombable wall. Because, I was like, wait, there's rocks here. I don't have the power bracelet yet. No, there is a bombable wall here. Now, it may help, it may take me a while to find this, because, again, screw this game and finding secrets. But thankfully, I got it on the first try. One thing that will help me is that because I've played uh, Hyrule Warriors and the adventure map uses some of the secrets in this game, uh, I might be able to figure some of them out, but. That's not going to be the case all the time, and it's still very fidgety, too. <coughs> okay, so... Next, we're going to go over here. To this room. And in here is where we can find the old lady. So if we get our letter... And show it to her... She will give us the option of two medicine. We have blue medicine and red medicine. Uh, blue medicine, it heals your hearts. Red medicine, it heals your hearts, but you can use it twice. So that's basically the difference between the two. Um, for now, I think I'm going to go ahead and just grab the blue medicine. I might come back and get the red medicine later. But we have stuff to buy still, so that's why I don't want to go hog wild with my rupees. Uh, but now that we've done this, uh, once again, need to get my notes back up and see where we're going to go next. Okay, the next item we're going to get is another defensive item. We've already gotten the level 2 shield, and we've already gotten a good attacking item. Now we're going to get something that will actually double our defense, our just natural defense whenever we get hit by something. Uh, so we're going to be getting the blue ring next. we got to navigate a few screens of these guys, though, first. And we gotta blow up another wall. 
Again, I seriously, seriously hate these secrets so much. I can't even <laughs> complain enough, I feel like, but maybe, maybe that's not true. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who hate these kinds of secrets as well. Um, I think I still need the candle. So, that's what I'm going to bring up next. Oh my god. Just go away. Go away from me. Oh, and of course I get hit by that guy. So I believe we want to go right here to find another staircase. I don't know why those guys keep taking forever to load sometimes. It's really, really tedious and annoying. And of course these guys just block my way. Like the jerks that they are. Um, let's see. One annoying aspect I find about, like, the hit detection of this game is sometimes when you hit them with your sword, or enemies with your sword, they'll bounce away, but other times they won't. And I'm not really sure what determines that. Like, sometimes I'll just hit an enemy straight up and they stay there. Other times I hit them and they bounce back like that. That can be really annoying when you want them to back ba bounce back and they don't. And then you get hit because of that. Also, I am at max rupees right now. So, I think we're I think we're pretty much done with collecting things at the moment anyway, so we don't have to worry about it, but yeah. There's no need to uh collect any more rupees until we're done. Okay, so now we're going to go over here. Of course, I get hit immediately. I'm almost thinking about just going back to that fairy fountain, but I won't. Oh yeah, I got I got it back. Okay, I'm gonna take care of these levers first <laughs> because seriously, screw the levers. I don't want to activate any of these other Armos Knights. So, I think I want to hit this guy. Nope. These guys don't move too fast, though. Okay, that's the one we wanted to hit. Because in here, we can get the Blue Ring. As I said, it increases defense, so it's a very good item to have. It also changes uh, your overworld sprite color too, so Link is now kind of a bluish purple color. Which, hey, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, so with that out of the way, it's actually time to move on to the second dungeon. Because uh, that's all the overworld stuff we can do right now, I'm pretty sure. There might be like one or two things you can like take a look at, but... I think we're going to just move on. I think we're going to move on and get this game going forward towards the end game. I am not looking forward to the end game, though, because this, this game does get very tough. Like, it gets really, really tough. And I don't think... if I Even if I play this game like a thousand times, I still feel like it's always going to be kind of a hard end game. Hell, even the mid game is kind of hard, because that's when it kind of introduces you to some of the toughest enemies. And some of the enemies in this game are completely ruthless. They will, like, take you down and uh, keep you down. They'll essentially try to hold your breath underwater, I guess is another uh, comparison. Also, I hate going through the desert, but this is a pretty quick way, I remember, in getting to the second dungeon. This is where I found that one secret. All I have to do from here is go down twice and left once and you should pretty much be there after you take out some more Octoroks and get two fairies that I don't even need anymore <laughs> silly silly game another cool feature about this game is like whenever you reach a dungeon they have like a stronger slightly stronger enemy uh, guarding the dungeon gate I always found that kinda cute they had like a orange Octorok in the first dungeon, and then they had just the blue one there. I think next time they'll have a Tektite or something. 
I always like cute little details like that. Uh, these snakes, I believe, are called ropes. They're really not too bad. They kind of remind me of the penguin enemies in uh, Link to the Past. How when you're actually level with them, they'll charge you. You can use that to your advantage in picking them off. Also, I'm getting a lot of rupees, which I really, really like. Okay, I did take some damage, but that's okay. Oh, but yeah, but I have the blue ring, so I didn't take that much damage. See, the blue ring's already showing how useful it is. Now, I think for this game, there's like kind of a like three or four room discrepancy, where if you uh, go like four rooms away from one room, uh, the enemies will only respond then. So if you uh, clear out all the enemies in a room and only go like two rooms away and then come back, they shouldn't be there. But if you go any farther, they should respawn, so you want to be careful of that. Uh, what do we have? Oh, right, these shark fin enemies, as I called them. I know they're supposed to be, like, small little gel enemies. Maybe even choo-choos, but, uh... I'm gonna call them shark fins. And yeah, we got the compass, and as you can see on the map screen, or what would be the map screen, we have that little blinking dot, so that will be the, uh, location of the Triforce. Ouch. Stupid Gorias. Oh, damn it. Well, at least we got the stopwatch. We can pretty much beat these guys. And get some bombs. Now, right here... Actually, no, it's the next room. I can never remember which room it is. Uh, we can find the level 2 boomerang in this dungeon, which is going to be very helpful in some cases. But I believe the room you get the boomerang in is pretty tough to uh, keep all your health. So having sword beams might help, but we'll see. Also, why did those guys not charge at me? That's weird. Okay, here we go. So here we have go blue Gorias. And there we go, there's the Magical Boomerang. Uh, the Magical Boomerang travels a lot farther than the normal Boomerang. It pretty much goes across the entire screen, so that's why it's helpful. Uh, these are Lomnolas. We've actually seen them in Link to the Past, if you've watched that playthrough. They're like kind of the sand snakes. Uh, they're just red balls in this game. <laughs> they're nothing to fear. And you can, you can destroy any parts of their body. You don't have to go for one specific one. So you can just kind of bully and body them. Also, damn it, I lost a heart. It's okay, though, because the boss of this dungeon is kind of a joke. <clears throat> but we'll get there. We still have a few rooms to go. I think we can pretty much just go to the boss at this point. Okay, shoot, let me... Perfect! Okay, I was kind of hoping for that to happen. I knew I was going to get swarmed by snakes, but as long as I got enough to get me the uh, heart that I needed, I'd be okay. More shark fins, more rupees. I believe this is going to be an old man hint. Dodongo dislikes smoke. That is a good hint of how we're supposed to beat the boss. It's also a very uh, classic line, much like the It's Dangerous to Go Alone line. That's one I always remember hearing. Also, whenever you get the uh, Magic Boomerang, the Gorias actually get upgraded to have that as well. An interesting aspect. I don't know why they do it that way, but they do. So here we go, it's boss time. Here we have the Dodongo. He doesn't look very threatening. It's because he's not. See, he's already dead. Pretty much beat two bosses without taking any damage. <clears throat> Which are retro achievements, by the way, if you ever play this game on retro achievements. 
Also, I guess there are a few questions that you guys are probably asking me in regards to this playthrough, because The Legend of Zelda actually has a second quest. So I'm sure you guys are wondering, am I going to be doing the second quest? Honestly, I don't see a purpose for doing it for this marathon. It might be something I'll do in the future, like maybe as a retro achievement stream and I'll upload that or something to go along with this playthrough. But um, I'm, I'm just going to count the first quest because the second quest is really just... It's the same map, like the same overworld and everything. You have the same number of dungeons and all of that stuff. It's literally just things are in different locations. And I think it's a little harder too, so... I think that's going to be probably better to cover in a format like a stream as opposed to doing, like, you know, another project on it. Also, fun fact. We unlocked Dungeon 8. <laughs> yeah, that is Dungeon 8 right there. We'll be back there later. I always found it weird that you unlock that right here. I don't know, I always found that interesting. Uh, so yeah, I'm making my way to Dungeon 3. Dungeon 3 is not too far. One thing you could do is you could, like, save and quit, and then you'll actually be at Dungeon... or be close to Dungeon 3, because it's very close to the beginning of the game. Like, this is the beginning of the game, right? Or, not quite. We're almost there. I believe this is the beginning of the game. Yep. So what we need to do is we need to go left, up, left a few more screens, down and right. Not here. Actually, is it here? No, it's not. I feel like there is something there, though. I really hope I got this right. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, here it is. I'm, I'm good. And yep, there's a Tektite, so... You know that this is not... too hard of a dungeon for this point, but... it is definitely harder than the Octorok. These are where I think are supposed to be the Choo-Choo or Gel enemies. They look more intimidating than the shark fins. This dungeon also has a very powerful en enemy that starts showing up at this point in the game. But we'll see that. We'll see that shortly. <clears throat> Here it is. Here are the Dark Nuts. The Dark Nuts suck. <laughs> Uh, you can only hit them from the sides or on the back, but the problem is sometimes they kind of move in a weird pattern, so they're not really that vulnerable. So you have to find a way to kind of get around that. Also, I just realized, I never mentioned it, uh, dungeon, uh, dungeon 2 was the moon dungeon, which the map looked like a crescent moon. Oh, come on. How'd that happen? <clears throat> really do not know how that happened. It was ridiculous, though. I think with the... Oh, no, he st it still takes two hits. I was like, wait, with the white sword? Can I hit these guys in only one shot? But no, I'm thinking of the level th uh, three sword. Which uh, we will actually be getting soon. It's not too far out of the way. But stupid dark nuts. Because, yeah, they do that a lot, where they you hit them, but then they turn at you, so you can't really take a huge advantage out of uh, your time hitting them. Also, you know what? Screw this. <laughs> I don't want to deal with those guys. I'm just going to go down here and get the dungeon item for this dungeon, which is a raft. You're probably wondering, what will a raft do for us? Uh, it's not really a practical item you'll see a whole lot of use out of. It's really just to get a heart container and reach Dungeon 4. That's really its only use. And 
And uh, for those wondering, the dungeon, this dungeon is called the Manji Dungeon. Also, whenever you get hit by those guys, the sp sprinkly, flashy guys, they don't give any damage to you, but you will uh, be prevented from using your sword for a few seconds. So you gotta look out for that. Okay, where am I? More choo-choos. We have the compass. I need to find the map, though. Where is the map? Up, oh, another old man hen. Did you get the sword from the old man on top of the waterfall? I sure did. It was a good gift, and I'm glad I got it. So at this point, I'm really just collecting keys, because keys are awesome. And I'm not really too worried about the boss, because I'm pretty sure the boss is a very quick one, if you get lucky enough. If you don't, it might take a little while, but I don't think it's some a boss you'll take like a huge amount of damage from, honestly. So I'm not too worried about it. I have not found the map yet, though. Because I did want to show off the map really quick and point out something. Uh, not worth it. I know it's only three of them, but eh. I'll just, I'll just go on. Basically, it's a Manji... Oh, wait, here's the map, anyway. So... <laughs> this symbol... Like, I think it's not the same symbol. Like, I think it's backwards. Like, it's supposed to be facing the other way. But, uh, the symbol's supposed to look like... Well, it's not supposed to. Again, it's a manji. Just a manji icon. But it looks very similar to the uh, swastika. Which is not a very good symbol. But, I, again, I think it's supposed to be... Uh, I think it, it's supposed to be facing the other way. And it's supposed to be tilted, too, I think, so... That's another aspect where it's, you know, not... It's not the swastika. Definitely not supposed to be. Okay. So the next boss, I believe, we want to have bombs for us. Well, I don't think you need bombs, but I like using bombs because it's the quickest way. Uh, you have the manhandler. Wow, okay, good. That was a, me getting lucky right there. Uh, but yeah, whenever you take off one of its heads, it'll get a little faster and more erratic. But if you're lucky enough, you can destroy the whole thing with one bomb, which is what I did. So I'm really happy about that. So yeah, there we go. That's Dungeon 3. Actually, very simple. Kind of a pathetic dungeon, actually. And we can uh, start making our way to the next dungeon. Uh, let me count my hearts really quick, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think I only need one more so I can get the next sword upgrade. But either way, I think I might need the item from this next dungeon anyway, so I may want to just go ahead and go for it. And I still have that potion, too. Yeah, I'm going to go for dungeon 4. Dungeon 4 is not too far from here. There is another uh, heart container I can get, but I'll just wait a little bit till I get it. When I have to do more exploring anyway. So we're looking for a body of water that has a, a bridge, or like a little dock at it. That's where you can use the raft, pretty much. Uh, is this it? Is this the same pool of water, or is it a different pool? Ouch. Okay, I think that's the ra that's the dock we want to get to. Again, still doing good because I'm not dying at all. Aside from that one stupid death from before.